Today, I bought the LEGO Star Wars The Armorer's Mandalorian Forge. Hello everyone, it is I, Republic Dead, and today I bought the LEGO Star Wars at 75319 The Armorer's Mandalorian Forge, coming with 258 pieces, ages 8 and up, 3 minifigures, and retailing for 30 US dollars. Now this is a absolutely fantastic set, and I am going to be getting into all the details, as there are a lot of them, but first, I am going to ask you all to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, it'll help me out a bazooka ton. You guys just gotta do it. And as I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this for another like five seconds. So you might as well, you know, tap out and, and hit the like button. Right, have you hit it yet? Probably, probably not. Uh, but, but, but you should, because I know there are at least a thousand of you watching, and, and, and you all are gonna... Just, just press it. it it's, why is it not... Wait, the, the thing is not blue yet. Come on. What are you waiting for? It's good? All right, thank you. Okay, so now that we got that under control, we are going to get right onto the hyperlapse. If you guys don't like sticking around for those, we do have time markers down there, so it'll tell you when we start. We're going to table the box, uh, but let's get right on that. So first up, I would like to take a look at the box. Obviously, it looks great. I do love this. It is just a very dark tone. You will notice in the background, you do get some of the lighting, almost like the hallway they were in. Uh, you know, it probably could have made a little more detail, but you know, what, what are you going to do? Uh, you do again get this side box printing, which I have been praising LEGO for. They've been super consistent on it. It looks great here. It looks great on all the sets. Again, huge praise. And then we'll move this around and you do get a look at all the little details on the printing. You also get a look at the armor and the scale here. You get the LEGO Star Wars logo, all that fun stuff. Now let's take a look at the instructions. Here is the instruction manual. It is very simple. I do love how LEGO includes QR codes on them now. Again, nothing too insane. You do get a look at all of that. And then I believe there is some promotion for the Skywalker Saga, which is coming out obviously in 2022, we know. You also get a look at all of this. Uh, you know, I honestly would prefer if they just purely stuck to Mandalorian advertising like they do back here. Um, but they don't. Like for the minifigures, it's weird. Like I feel like they should do minifigures for just Mandalorian sets. But hey, that's just me. Now let's move into the minifigs. So the first minifigure we're going to be taking a look at here is the Armorer. Now the Armorer obviously is uh, a character uh, that has had some controversy around it, or the, mainly the minifigure. Obviously the minifigure has not been popular. So we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive on this later in my thought section where I really hit on this. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the, the, you know, I guess weapons. Uh, these are her tools that she uses to forge the Beskar. You can even take, say, a piece of the Beskar and you could actually hold it uh, with her little, you know, pickaxe or I don't even know what to call this. Firestar made a better version of this. I would have preferred a mold probably, but I understand why they didn't. She also gives her this hammer. That works well uh, for that all intents and purposes. Uh, obviously, the big problem here is the helmet. The helmet is inaccurate on nearly all fronts. Obviously, it comes with the stupid, stupid, like, like this is the dumbest desi design flaw ever. Here, I'll show a picture of the armor here. The helmet looks nothing like it. She has five horns in the front. This one has four horns in the back. Obviously, it is the Gar Saxon mold. It was just a lazy thing on LEGO's part. And I love LEGO, but this was certainly, you know, not fantastic. She does not come with a face print, which, you know, I 
understandable. Uh, and the next thing, she doesn't actually come with any back shawl. You see a little bit of the fur on the side, and then you get it printed on the back. She should have come with something. She feels so bland. It, like Other companies have done it. Firestar Toys has done a great one. Uh, again, I'll talk about that later. Uh, a, a thing they did nail down, generally speaking, though, is the armor. Like Other than that, the, the printing is very great. I love the toe to, to, to uh, you know belt printing. That all looks great. Obviously, you know, we do get back printing, so I'll let you admire that for a second. Uh, but other than that, that there's nothing much here. Now, let's take a look at the next character. Next character up is going to be Din Djarin. Obviously, uh, you know, the Mandalorian. This is going to be another set and a, I believe, better $30 set to get uh, than, say, the Encounter on Tatooine or whatever that one was called. Uh, but there is a glaring problem with this guy, and it is the jetpack. This is a dark silver jetpack. They've done light silver jetpack the same exact color as this helmet for Jango Fett. I do not understand why they gave him the dark one. It is the exact same color in the show. Uh, but either way, uh, he still does not have the face print, which is disappointing. Uh, you do check he does have his same blaster build. He should have had a pistol, in my opinion. He does come with his arm printing. You guys have come accustomed to this guy. Obviously, he has been a pretty good staple here. Uh, you know, I love the arm printing. He has been showing up in a lot of sets. And then we take off the headpiece, and you will see the back printing. Obviously, nothing too exciting, but it is, again, a great minifigure, in my opinion. Uh, still a certainly fantastic one. Now, let's move in to the next one. Next up after that, we have Paz Vizsla. Now, I only have a singular problem with this guy, and it is the he helmet. Uh, and again, I don't want to hit too hard on this. Uh, it just doesn't look right to me. But either way, that it, there it is. It obviously looks very you know similar to other Mandalorians, and I cannot wait to combine this with the Mando Battle Pack, but that's you know another side point. Uh, he does come with this nice blaster that clips onto this backpack piece, which is great. I do like the little build for the backpack. You do see a little jetpack jet, so you could have him fly around. He obviously can't have his arms go up too much, so he can't you know salute Mando because he does have this piece. Uh, however, I will, will briefly compliment the details all around. Uh, you do get on this armor piece that is the same as Wrecker's, a little Mandalorian signet. You also do get all of the printing on that, which is great. Obviously, it doesn't come with a face printing. That is to be expected. And then I will take these pieces off. Um, you know, it's going to take a second. Uh, but you do get some fantastic armor printing on the torso, you know. So if you don't really want to have that on or you want to make another Mandalorian, I think that works really well. And again, the leg printing looks fantastic. They did a great, great job with him. And then you turn him around and he gets printing on the back, which was completely unnecessary for the amount of detail they gave him here. Uh, but it still looks fantastic. I really, really love this figure from the neck down. It is just so great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take a look at this jam-packed build of the Mandalorian Forge, and we are going to move from right to left, so let's get into it. So first, to make this easier, I am going to simply detach this part of the build, as it does come in two sections, which is great. You get this wall piece, and then you get the forge itself. So I would like to take a look at the forge. Uh, now, first off, you do get this little chair and table setup. Now, this is where Mando and the armorer usually like to have their meetings uh, to discuss all the best scar Mando has won and, you know, discuss what to forge it into. So I will sit them both down and you could, you know, put the best scar on the table. Uh, obviously, if they included the Cantono, which I think that is supposed to resemble, uh, that would be great. And, you know, I think that's pretty cool. I really think that was a neat detail that they were able to sneak in there. They didn't have to do, uh, but it was great. Uh, now, moving over, you do get the forge itself. First off, I will note there are all these little stickers around here, which is great. And you also do get these clips on the side. So with these clips, you can basically put the armor's pieces here. And if Mando's sitting down, there are clips on the other side. So you could put down his little blaster, which is great and dandy. Now, you do get this little piece. This is a little box. Uh, is the same one they use in... Uh, you know, the Cantina and the Grief Cargo one, uh, the Grief Cargo set, the, uh, you know, Imperial Marauder, uh, which is, you know, cool, uh, but it doesn't have printing on it. And all you have to do is the armor could take her, you know, thing 
and you simply load it into the fire uh, where it sits nice and dandily and then you also do get this nice little mechanism uh, in which basically this is like the mechanism that I guess covers uh, you know the best gar say and you'd have that rotate around uh, I don't know why I honestly think it should have probably just been stuck in place uh, but you can rotate that down to an almost 260 degree angle uh, which is pretty nice and I do like this whole feature I like the printing I like the little blue flames that resemble the fire that is all fantastic now I want to take a look at the wall section. Now, I love this. There's so much to dive into. So first off, uh, you will note there is a little workbench over here. Uh, there is a little ice skating piece. I'm not 100% sure what this is supposed to represent, uh, but I'm sure it's probably like, probably maybe the Mando's, you know, whistlers like on his arm that he has. Uh, like maybe one of the an arm brace, uh, but this is a nice little table, and above it you do get this plain printed, man, unprinted Mandalorian helmet. I'll try to focus better in on that, uh, but that is the one from the season one version of Mando, uh, so we will put that back, obviously, and, and you do get this little light, this little brown thing that symbolizes, I guess, a wall barricade uh, right here that comes with the light, which is great, and then you also will look up and you will see the Mandalorian logo, I believe that is the Great Mythosaur. And then you also do get a broom, so if you want to have Mando sweep up, uh, then you can do so. Next up, we have one of my favorite features, and this is the little casing over here. Uh, so first off, you do get the little beep bop boops. These are the buttons uh, to open it. And then Alexa, you get this nice sticker. Uh, so we'll take a closer look at that sticker. Obviously, we'll try to look better. That is her clamp that she uses. I think that is resembled by this brick, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but you do get that nice design, and you also get some, I guess, em empty hangers or whatever. And I love how this opens up. Now, you can also pull this area out, and like so. And then you also do get some special features. Uh, so you get a little Beskar piece. Uh, which is great. We'll zoom in on that. I do like the way they did the Beskar pieces. I think you couldn't have really done a better thing unless you gave them a new like mold with print. Or you didn't even have to do a mold. You just print on a 1x2 tile. You get a silver blaster, which is appropriate for Mandalorians. And you technically get one grenade, but they gave you two in the in terms of extra pieces. So I put a second one here. Obviously, you know, this is where Mando and Kara and all them buffed up their armors, uh, which is great. And then over here, you do get a look at the amazing uh, little details. I love this little control panel, and more importantly, I love that little hologram. And I will take a closer look at that. Now this actually works well in the, you know, uh, oh my gosh, uh, the Im Imperial Light Cruiser, and I will show you guys what that looks like. Uh, but this is where, you know, when Mando says, I will, I'm coming for you, and uh, you know, he means more to me than you, than you will ever know. Uh, I really like that, and I'll show you that, obviously, in some B-roll, and that looks great. And then we also have this little press where you can, you know, mold the armor. That was where you melt the armor. This is where you mold it. Uh, so you can, like, you know, press this little thing, and then I guess it dials down. This is a piece of Beskar on here. Uh, and then we're going to move the model around. There is no real uh, details back here other than this, which I think was a nice detail they did not have to do, but is still much appreciated. Now, to put this all back together, all you have to do is clip on this part. Like so... And your build is 100% together, looking all nice and dandy. Now, let's give my final thoughts. So, the Armorer's Mandalorian Forge. Pretty interesting set. There is a lot of factors going to that. First off, I will say, anyone who bought the Encounter on Tatooine set earlier this year, the one that came with Mandu, Grogu, and the Tusken Raider, they got screwed. This was a much better value. First off, you're getting... Two exclusive figures. One comes with a jetpack that didn't come with Home of Force. Kind of three, not really. Uh, you're also getting a fantastic build. It is an awesome playset build. Super fun. Uh, you guys know I, I this was a really great build for 30 bucks. I think it's even, you know, in a, in a way, on par with Power Spell Pack. Not really. Um, but, you know, it's still an interesting thing. And I might compare, like, the $30 sets of the last two years together. Uh, just to, be, uh, you know, see, like, how, you know, they compare. Um, but either way, the big problem you guys know here I have is with the minifigures. And I talked a little bit about this in the minifigure uh, section of the review. The armor. Oh, it's just so, so bad. Um, so, so I did put out a video. Firestar Toys sent me this amazing custom, the armor minifigure. It looks so good, and like it is one of the best custom figures I've seen, period. And Lego dropped the ball hard. First off, this should have had a new mold. It had five horns in the front of its helmet. This one has four in the back. 
I know they wanted to be cheap and reuse the mold. I think they could have done it. They've done special molds in other sets, uh, like the one from Solo. I'll show a picture of it. I'm blanking on the name, but it does come with like these two speeders. Same price, and it comes with two exclusive helmet molds. The second one is Paz Vizsla. Uh, now, Paz Vizsla should have come with an exclusive helmet mold. It just doesn't work for him too well. He does have a different looking helmet, and this just doesn't look like him. You know, If I didn't know any better, I probably wouldn't have known it was him. And then also Mando, two things with him. One, why is his jetpack dark gray? It should have been light gray. They've done that before. They've done it with the Django Fett. And also, uh, another small thing is it doesn't have the cape, uh, which they work together. I guess I understand that's a certain quality problem they have because they know the cape will get bent up, but they have done things like where they'll have the cape overlap or underlap under the jetpack with Boba Fett's and pre Vizslas. And they, I'm pretty sure there's a Boba Fett even on the market. Um, Air just got off the market that did that. So I don't know what is going on here. Uh, finally, with the armor, obviously should have she should have had the back shawl, obviously. Um, that, that was outrageous that they didn't do that. Let me do a fix video on how to, like, fix this set. Um, you know, because those have been doing pretty popular, so I might have to do that. Uh, but yeah, so those are my full thoughts. The build is fantastic. I do love the little section with the little, you know, hologram. That is a great print. I think they did good with the Beskar and the stickers, all of that stuff. But with that said, I will see you all in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe. It'll help me out a ton, guys, and I'd really appreciate it. We're so close to 22,000. Let's hit 22,000 before 2022, okay? Okay, I'll see you guys on the next one. Remember to peace out and stay awesome.